It is Saturday, October 22nd in the NBA, and I'm back with my three favorite picks of the day. Yo, what's going on? My name's Austin from Calling Our Shot. Let's talk about yesterday real quick. So close to bringing out the brooms, a four in one day. Our best foot of the day, Desmond Bain over two and a half assists. He can take it three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half. He ends with seven assists. A no sweat bet. We are undefeated on our best bets of the day, which are always a one and a half unit play. Maybe more going on. Now, Bam out of bat. Tyrese Alleyburn and the Wizards all get it done. Our only loss of the day was the rookie, Jabari Smith Jr., over 14 and a half points. He was three for 14 from the field. He had a shot opportunity, just didn't get it done. Hopefully, we helped him make some money. If we did, go down below, smash that subscribe button, smash that like button. Look, we appreciate you guys all for showing all the love so far. Let's keep grinding. If you are new, like I said, hit that subscribe button. We're closing in on 50,000 subscribers, a couple thousand away from it. Go hit that subscribe button. As, as promised, our NFL Week 7 Player Props and Parlays video will be live later on this evening, maybe 6 p.m. Eastern time. Set your alarm clocks for that. And no, I don't normally promote this too much, but if we've been helping you make some money, go consider becoming a COS All-Star. It's our YouTube membership. You get a cool, couple cool extra perks. It's only $2.99 a month. And one of the best, best perks is you get the plays early. So you get the plays about an hour early before the video drops. Sometimes that's important for line movements, but also it's another way to show appreciation for all the work that I do, 100% for free. You don't have to do it, but if you want to, Go click the join button below the channel name, and I will shout you out in tomorrow's NBA video if you do that today. Now let's hop into the best bit of the day, put another one and a half units on this guy, and you'll probably know who it is. Joel Embiid, we're taking his over 26 and a half points, minus 117 on seizures. Now I know the immediate question will be, how do I feel about this at 27 and a half? I'm fine with it there too. And you could also split this at 20, uh, minus 130 on DraftKings if you'd like. I saw 27 and a half on FanDuel. Now let's talk about Embiid. Now Doc Rivers then is their second after the second game. Talked about some plantar fasciitis that, you know, Embiid might have struggled with through the offseason. I'm not worried about that at all. I think Embiid bounces back because so far he struggled shooting the ball. In their first game versus the Boston Celtics, only 26 points. Say only because, you know, it's Joel Embiid has gotten this, you know, this allure over him that he can score 30 on any given night, given how he did last year. But 26 points on 9 of 18 shooting versus Celtics. Then last game, 15 points, 6 for 21 shooting against the Bucks. It's one of the main reasons they lost that game as he did score a single point in the second half. He had 11 points in the first quarter. And then, yeah, well, he disappeared the rest of the game. Then he bounces back. The Celtics and Bucks defenses, much tougher than we will see today from the San Antonio Spurs. Now, the Sixers are 0-2. You definitely can't go to 0-3 against the Spurs team. That really doesn't want to win. They won yesterday, but they don't really, it's not a team that should win a lot of games this year. And the good thing about the Spurs, they allow the second most points per game in the paint. And look, Embiid, he's a center. He's going to be living in the paint, especially with the jumper not falling. So I think he'll be in there a good amount. Should be able to score some layups, dunks, who knows? Floaters, I don't care how he does it. Mid-range shots, I don't care. Embiid should be in the paint cooking. And he has been cooking versus the San Antonio Spurs. His last four games against him, 38, 31, 34, and 27 points. Since December, I wanted to look at how does Embiid, you know, perform when he has a bad shooting game? Does he just come out and not shoot the ball? Or does he bounce back like I expect him to do? Since December of last season, Embiid, nine games in which he shot below 40 percent he shot even worse than that he shot 26 percent i believe in their second game of the year here is point totals in the games immediately following a bad shooting game he scored 28 and 32 36 40 42 27 35 34 30 point. you see you get the point he's gonna bounce back and i think he certainly gets that done hopefully scoring 30 plus points for us today now the only main concern is a blowout. Yes, the line in the spread is about 13 points in this one. Maybe the Sixers blow them out, but I ultimately don't think they blow them out unless Embiid is cooking. James Harden, I don't expect to be dropping 30 plus points every single night. This feels like a game they need to get Embiid going. James Harden can't be a one-man show. We saw that worked in the Rockets. They were a decent regular season team. Didn't do well in the playoffs. They need Embiid to get going. And after only three free throw attempts last game, I imagine if Jakob Pertl's out there, there's a quick uh, 12 free throw attempts because that man fouls like it's going out of style. So I do think we're going to trust the process tonight. Joel Embiid, best bit of the day, one and a half units. And it's over 26 and a half points. Totally fine. 27 and a half. I think he gets 30 tonight. I don't know the value on 30, probably about plus 130 or something like that. Now let's talk about my favorite game pick of the day. We don't have a spread, but we do have a game pick with 2-0 and on these. Can we go to 3 and out? Become undefeated? I'm taking the Cavaliers, taking their team total under 109 and a half points, minus 115 on BetMGM. Now, this is in no way me saying that the Cavaliers beat the Bulls today or that they cover the spread or that this full game's going under. I'd rather just take the Cavs team total under. Now, Fandle at the moment, as I record this, 626 a.m. Eastern time. If we don't have a line on Fandle, I would play this down to 107 and a half. Wouldn't go anywhere else than that. Now, let's talk about our boy, Darius Garland. I don't know what happened, but it, something happened to his eye in the first game, and he's going to be out for today. Unless he gets randomly ruled back in, which would be a tough beat. 
He's going to be out, and look, that's going to lead to the playmaking duties in the newly acquired Cavalier, Mr. Donovan Mitchell. And then Karis LeVert. Outside of those two guys, not going to be a lot of created offense out there. And in their first game, the Cavaliers scored 105 points against a good Toronto team, but they shot 49% from the field. Can they continue shooting that well from the field? Your guess is as good as mine. I don't think so. Now today, the Cavaliers, like I talked about, will take the Bulls and take on the Bulls. And while the Bulls aren't the best defense in the world, they're not going to go down as that. They're still decent, and they're not going to play super fast, which is what we want to see. The Bulls, you know, you look at their two games so far this season. They lost to the Wizards yesterday. Thank you, Bulls. We appreciate it. And they scored, they allowed 102 points to a talented Wizards offense. And then their first game of the year allowed 108 to the Heat. So they did go under in both the games. Well, the team total on the other side against the Bulls has gone under in both games. And ultimately, the Wizards and Heat that they've played against, I would argue, have about as good, if not better, shooting guys and offensive playmakers than the Cavaliers will have today. They'll have Donovan Mitchell. He's good. Don't get me wrong. They'll have Karis LeVert. You never know what you're getting out of him. Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, Kevin Love off the bench. They don't have a lot of production, so you're going to rely a lot on Donovan Mitchell. And all it takes is Donovan Mitchell not shooting the ball well today. And, well, then we're pretty good because I think Donovan Mitchell is going to be the guy that's going to have to carry it to go over to score 110-plus points. In the Bulls' defense, if it's good at anything, it's stopping opposing guards. They got Alex Caruso. He's going to be the guy on Donovan Mitchell. And, look, Caruso's a pretty good defender. He's going to be pesky. He's going to be all up in Donovan Mitchell's face all game long. And so look at last year. The Cavaliers, when they played the Bulls, they scored 115, 104, 91, and 94 points versus them. This is the Bulls' offense that I don't know if Zach Levine's back. But if he's not, it's going to be DeMar DeRozan dribbling the air out of the basketball. And ultimately, they just don't trust. I can sleep at night knowing I took the Cavaliers offense without Garland, took their team total. I don't expect the chemistry with the big men to be as good as Don as Garland's is. And no spread pick really stuck out to me. So I like the Cavs team total. Look, it's 109.5 on BetMGM right now. Like I said, I take it down to 107.5. I don't want to root against you, Cavs. I hope you win because I like the Cavs. Just don't score 110 points. Now, let's move on to my final player prop for the video. And you'll understand why in a second. Take a mister, and he's on my shirt. Ja Morant. And we're taking his over, though. Seven and a half assists, minus 11, minus 111 on FanDuel. Now, a Grizzlies assist prop worked out for us yesterday. Why not do it again? And while I looked at Bane's assist prop, it's three and a half, like minus 150. The books have caught on to us. But I do think that we'll see Ja Morant have a pretty good game today. And like yesterday, he went off. The man had 49 points. and had a lot of chances to get to the 50 piece. But... In the first game of the year, talk about Morant. Nine assists in the first game, 19 potential assists. Like I talked about Bane yesterday. The Grizzlies, are, they don't have many playmakers. Very similar to a Cavaliers team. We just took the team total under on it. Look, last night, Morant, sure, 49 points. Did have eight assists. I think he had like six at halftime. Didn't pass a single thing in the second half. But I don't know how many potential assists, assists he had in that game. But I imagine it was 13 to 17. This is, The ball is going to be in Morant's hands nonstop all season long. And unfortunately for Morant, Morant, I think the Mavericks defense, who they played today, much better than what he's seen so far this year. And I think they have better rim protection to make Morant have to pass the ball. We saw the Rockets trying to double team him at the end of the game yesterday. Unfortunately, they had Jabari Smith Jr. trying to double team him. And he's not used to doing that. Alper and Sangoon too slow. So ultimately, Morant was able to get wherever he wanted. And that's what led to him scoring 49 points. Now, I think we'll look at guys got to help out Morant. Desmond Bain can't buy a bucket. I think he knocks down some more shots today. Morant has had eight plus assists in six of his last seven games. Eight plus assists in four of his last six versus the Mavericks. And in the Mavericks' first game of the year, they allowed Devin Booker and Chris Paul both each nine assists on 15 potential assists. Pretty certain Morant's going to have, you know, 15 potential assists in this game. It all comes down to his teammates knocking down the shots. But Morant's the guy you got to stop if you're the Mavericks and Jason Kidd and Luka Doncic on the other side. Like, they have to stop Morant from scoring the basketball. I think that says, eh, we'll leave with Aldama, Conchars of the world knocking down threes. We'll live with it. We can't let Morant go out there and drop a 40 piece. And he still can and still get eight assists. But look, his usage rate is ridiculous. 37% versus the Knicks. 43% last night versus the Rockets. And the Mavericks just have better rim protection than the two teams he's seen so far. I mean, Mitchell Robinson's pretty solid, but he was in foul trouble all game. The Rockets, or the Mavericks, they got JaVale McGee. They got Christian Wood. And at the end of the day, Morant can't do it all on his, on his own. He's going to need to pass it to his teammates. I'm not worried about his minutes. Only played 31 last night. Should be in line for 35 or so minutes. This game means a little bit more to the Grizzlies uh, this, instead of the Rockets game than it does. this Mavericks game means a little bit more to them. So, Morant, get the ball out of his hands. Go pass it to your teammates. Assisting is nice. It's sad to Give your friends, give your friends the ball. We're giving an eight plus assist. Now let's start. Now we're gonna wrap it up the video with a couple leans, and you'll understand why. Because, and I think going forward, maybe on the weekends we post this video a little bit later. One because I'd love to sleep in, maybe a couple hours on the weekend, but also two, we don't get a lot of lines super early in the day. And so, as always, 
I'll pop up a bunch of leans and we'll talk about each of them for about 10 to 25 seconds each and you'll understand why I lean in them. But as always, if we do add a play, make sure you go down below, pin comment, I'll pin it and I'll add the play. Or you can follow us on Twitter at Colin I also tweeted out there if we do add a play. Maybe we add one or two or maybe we just stick to three plays. But you definitely know. You won't know. I won't add a play with three minutes to go before tip off. I'll add it well in advance. Now let's talk about a couple of these guys. Tyrese Halliburton, the man. He's taking on uh taking on the Pistons, and I like his matchup, his assist line. I mean, uh, Halliburton yesterday barely played a ton of minutes, played almost the whole fourth quarter, but he was benched in the second quarter, him in the starting lineup. So he still got it done. 12 assists. I like the matchup against the Pistons. Should be a close game. Just don't know what his line's gonna be. Now, another one, Paolo Bencara continues to make people money. It took his over yesterday. He shot terribly. It's not a great matchup versus the Celtics, but ultimately at the end of the day. The Magic needs someone to shoot the ball, and Ben is going to be that guy. So he should be shooting 18 to 20 times almost every single night. If his line's still low, I'll consider adding it. Karis Lavert's assist versus the Bulls. I know we're taking a Cavaliers team total under, but as I talked about, Donovan Mitchell and Karis Lavert, the two guys that are going to have to facilitate a lot of the offense. Imagine Karis Lavert potentially gets it done. Bam on a bio guy that got his done, oh, got it done yesterday over in points. Didn't shoot a lot of times. Like I promised, Adebayo would never give us 15 field goal attempts. We weren't that lucky. But, and he had foul trouble too. But a decent matchup against the Raptors. He shouldn't be in foul trouble in that one. He should be out there a good amount. And they don't really have much rim protection. So Adebayo should be able to go in there and score if he wants to. Another guy I looked at, Shea Gilders Alexander, one of the only guys on this list that actually has a line. It's 25 and a half. Looked at his points versus the Nuggets. The spread's only seven points, meaning I maybe some guy gets benched. I don't imagine it's Jokic. I know Jamal Murray was arrested yesterday, so he should probably be back in this one. But with Jamal Murray out there, Shea Gilders Alexander should be able to get wherever he wants. Maybe I'll add that one. And then Drew Holiday, assist for the Rockets. Like I talked about yesterday, Rockets don't play an ounce of defense. Gave like 190 points to the Grizzlies. They don't play any defense. And Drew Holiday's going to have the ball in his hands. The problem is, I don't like you, Drew. You always hurt me. You never, you never ball out for me. You never do anything good whenever I take your overs. And when I take your unders, you're at Magic Johnson. So I don't know. I don't think we'll be uh, on Drew Holiday again. But I just want to give you guys a couple leans. If I do add any plays, pin comment. You'll see them there. But I appreciate you guys always for showing all the love on the channel. If you can see us also, you hit that join button on the channel. I'll shout you out tomorrow. And, of course, the NFL Week 7 Player Props and Parlays video will be live tonight. Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Set your alarm clocks. You'll see me there. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.